Hey y'all, Jason again from the D2. We've got more special coverage of Total Chaos. Next up, we've got an interview with Jan Kokol, the founder of Imago Design in Graz, Austria. Jan has worked on a lot of different kinds of projects, from architecture to jewelry design to art reproducing robotic arms. So enjoy the interview, make sure you subscribe to keep up with all the content we have coming out, and I will see you for the next one. Hi everybody, we're here at Total Chaos. Um, I'm sitting here with Jan Kokol, and uh, so let's get started. Um, Jan, uh, I saw your talk yesterday, and uh, I guess the first thing would be that maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, where you're from. Mm -hmm. I'm Jan Kokol and I was born in Ljubljana in Slovenia, but uh, since the very young age I was living in Austria most of the time. And uh, due to my studies, I studied architecture and um, design in Lisbon and architecture in Austria most of the time. But then once I started traveling, it was kind of a virus and I always wanted to be uh, having new experiences, you know, like um, going to other countries and everything. And um, at the end, currently, I'm living in Austria back again because I started uh, with my own company. But that's actually a longer story. So we, we'll talk about that in yeah. a moment. Yeah. Um, so you studied architecture. Yeah. That was your, your, your original mm -hmm. field. And uh, I guess that's also how you got started in 3D. Yeah, actually, through this, through, through working in architecture. Yeah, with 3D, you know, uh, I started <coughs> studying at the Technical University in Graz. That was in the year um, 97. So uh, the thing was that uh, at that time, even so, uh, most of the people, they were actually just drawing by hand. So the first two years, because I came like uh, my background was uh, more focused uh, in languages and everything, my education. So I didn't have any experience in drawings besides, you know, I like to make uh, comics, you know, drawing comics and stuff. But I never really had like uh, any experience of, uh, let's say, with geometry in that sense. So the first two years, I was really like, you know, doing everything by hand and this. Uh, but then later I switched uh, a bit to AutoCAD. And once I had my, um, my final thesis, then I was uh, saying, okay, now I really have to learn a bit more, let's say, professional 3D program. And I started just modeling my final project with the master thesis in Rhino. So I just, you know, okay. sat down, Rhino, it was yeah. three months, and it was just like straight away from, it was an easy switch from AutoCAD to Rhino because, you know, uh, Bob McNeil, he was working for, um, for AutoCAD, I mean, developing AutoCAD before and uh, things. So later, um, that was uh, kind of, yeah, you know, you just really took your time and you learned it and I mean you're still learning it because you know those programs require some time but actually it was very interesting but one part that was really uh, essential in that thing even before I started with all these cut things you know is just to have a perception of geometry so it was very important because as a student uh, I started working for the um, uh, architectural office of Günther Dominik and mm -hmm. uh, there Austrian, was Austrian architect uh, exactly yeah. <coughs> and then there was like um, I to say on the board at the university, I was looking like for, uh, you know, to gain, gain more experience in an architectural office. And there was like an announcement that the office of Günther Dominik, whom I admired a lot, and uh, I still do, of course. But uh, the thing is that there was like an announcement that they're looking for somebody to build a physical model of a new building they're going to be constructing. And I said, okay, then maybe I just apply and uh, let's see where that goes. Uh, but I thought, you know, it's such a famous architect, you know, it's the chance is not really high. So I go there, I show them my portfolio to the guys. And they say, yeah, okay, it's good to you. You can start tomorrow. And I was like, <laughs> oh, well, fantastic. You know, so I thought like, you know, there were like 1000 people um, asking, you know, for this job, like coming, you know, to, to introduce themselves. And they have picked the best one, you know, me. And I was like super proud. But then at the end, you know, I, I asked them the next day, yeah, so, you know, how many people came, you know? To, uh, to show their work and everything. And they said, yeah, you were the only one, you know? <laughs> and I was like, okay, you know, but you have to start somewhere. <laughs> I built this huge model, which was like nearly two meters, you know, it had like 12 floors uh, for the headquarters, T-Mobile headquarters oh, in Vienna. You, okay, you built a physical model yeah. of this building. Yeah, it was a working a... model because they were all, all the time changing things, you know, and you always had to adapt it, but that was part of the process. So it was not a presentation model, and it was really 12 floors with uh, 100 columns in each floor, which you had really to glue manually and cut manually, so. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very, uh, uh, we can show, we'll show a picture mm -hmm. of that. That's a very uh, expressive building. It's not quite standard, right? Yeah, so. no, 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 not at all. But uh, it was also, you know, for me, the perception to really, to learn about geometry and space and everything was very important. Even I think today, a lot of people really, they're just interested in 3D, you know, everything that is digital. But I think this experience for each, um, you know, becoming architect, it's very important to have like, um, this perception also of the physical space. Today we go there, you know, in VR, but it's still, I believe, uh, something different. So if you have the chance, you know, as a uh, future architect to go to make uh, through all these steps, I think it's very important to kind of, um, yeah, to shape uh, your knowledge of uh, geometry and space. Yeah, it's and absolutely so. true. It was the same for me, growing, you know, going through architecture school we drew everything. Mm -hmm. It yeah. was like, the, you know, I'm, I'm older, so, no, 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 <laughs> but, but it's still important. It's very mm -hmm. important. Um, 
Another interesting thing about your talk was, uh, as you went through the projects, uh, you have done so many different things from different uh, different areas, even to art uh, projects, research, um, 3D and architecture, jewelry design. Uh, yeah. Could you talk a little bit about that? Because I find it quite interesting that you were constantly moving mm -hmm. on to different things. Yeah, most most of the time, as I said, uh, after uh, I finished my degree, you know, then the next question was uh, when you're studying and you have like, uh, you know, you want to finish your master's or something, you know, you always have a mission. But once that is done, you need another goal, another mission. So I said, okay, I'm gonna do a PhD, you know, to uh, make a bit, uh, let's say, more research. I was interested in the topic of mass customization, but at the end I said, yeah, maybe now it's still a good time before I do that, you know, to gain more experience, to go maybe, you know, again abroad, you know, because I didn't want always to stay the same place. And um, even before that, then I said, I just go to Spain. So I worked for the office of uh, Enrique Meraes Beneta Telebue, which was very cool because uh, this office uh, gave me a lot of freedom. So I could explore all mm -hmm. different 3D things. So I was really, they called me kind of that time, the digital boy, because I was responsible for all the 3D stuff that was happening there, you know, video production, everything. And they also gave me time. I mean, there were also tight deadlines, but I always had time to experiment. And one day there was a project leader, she was asking the office yeah, uh, that they need somebody who helped them build a homepage. At that time, the homepages uh, were still, a lot of them were done with Flash. Yeah, which okay, today, yeah. I mean, you know, today you yeah. would not do it anymore, of course, uh, out of certain <laughs> reasons. But, uh, and then uh, she asked, you know, there was like a um, big office, uh, open space, and she asked, yeah, who, who, the, who knows how to work with Flash? And nobody knew, of course, you know, and uh, neither, uh, you know, did I. But uh, I said, yeah, of course, I can do it, you know. <laughs> and it was like, you know, it was a calculated risk, you know. But what can happen, you know? I said, okay, what they, uh, what they need, it's not too complicated. You can learn it. You can, you know, that time the tutorials were not spread so much. But you know, you could uh, look in the help files, you know, doing things. And I said, yeah, you know, it's a challenge, you know, why not, you know? So. The good thing, I believe, uh, for everybody is kind of, you know, to say that not to be afraid of things, you know. If you're always afraid, you know, I'm not going to be able to do that, this guy does it better or this person. You know, if you're always afraid of things, you're never going to make the next step to do something. And in that case, it was a natural uh, expansion because I just started uh, working on that. And after two years, I said, yeah, it's very fun. But then again, I want, uh, I had a very good position. It's a fantastic office, Benedetta Talibue, and it's a charm, really. But um, then I said, yeah, I want a change, I want to do something different. And by coincidence, I landed uh, well, you know, with, uh, with another office. We worked on the um, bridge pavilion of Zaha Hadid, where we did all the interior for the bridge and also was like mm -hmm. repairing everything in 3D because it was about, also about mass customization. There were like prefabricated pieces. So that was also a very interesting, um, let's say, um, a very interesting experience. And once uh, we finished it on the construction site, you were much, uh, very much involved in the construction process. That's where I got also this experience, and I was happy. It was something new I learned, and then it was time again to move on, going okay, to the PhD. Yeah, so, yeah. okay, yeah, that's interesting because, and you, as you went along, you also did. I think what was a really interesting project was the mass customization project mm -hmm. uh, with reproducing the art yeah. uh, with a robotic arm, mm -hmm. and this was a quite interesting. Because it's completely, uh, it yeah. still has to do with some kind of space, mm -hmm. <laughs> 3D space, but it's completely a different thing, <laughs> yeah. uh, totally. No, I think, you know, it's often, I believe, um, it's a pity when you, uh, as a person, you always um, think that you have to be limited to something, you know. If it's your choice, that's okay, you know, but uh, I think you always, um, for me, it's always important to see the bigger picture. You know, what can I do with that? You know, and architecture, it's um, very interesting uh, studies because you can really expand into different dimensions. And I started this topic of mass customization based on economic theory. So you had a really a very intense um, research background. But then it was also in relation to unique works of art. So questioning what is really uniqueness and what is uh, mass production, what is mass mm -hmm. customization. So the idea was, um, what I did, the project was uh, to take um, a uh, big robotic arm, so at that time I was uh, studying um, at Harvard, uh, GSD, and to take a big uh, robotic arm, the ABB, and um, to use a process that is uh, always used in the automotive industry or something for precise reproduction, to use it for playfulness. So in that case, there was like, the robotic arm got a custom tool. It was, uh, I was uh, trying to imitate a painting of Franz Klein, the American expressionist, uh, who is very famous for his, let's say, uh, over painting of black and white uh, structures. And uh, this robotic arm had this uh, special tool, so it was kind of a brush. And then it was programmed to go into the bucket where there were like black and white color. And then it was just uh, starting creating the painting. But it's a very simple theory, but the idea there was that um, you have digital data, and even if you delete the digital data, it's stored somewhere, you know? So the digital data can always be exactly reproduced. So, you know, it's a copy, it's a clone. 
But in that case, uh, the dripping of color, you know, it's, uh, it's chaos, it's unforeseen and it's like um, it's, uh, you cannot reproduce it in exactly the same manner. So then mm -hmm. the test has been made with a smaller robot, which reproduced six small paintings. And each painting, because of this, you know, dripping, everything uh, got a really different aspect. So that was the main goal to show how, for example, a really repetitive, pre precise process can be used for uniqueness. Yes, yeah. It sounds like that this uh, changing between the different, uh, uh, the different things that you did wasn't just coincidence. It plays a part, but it was also conscious. Yeah. You wanted to do something else. And uh, so when it came up, the mm -hmm. coincidence presented itself. You said, I'm going to do that because uh, you, didn't want, you wanted to do something else. Yeah, it was necessary that I didn't like the <laughs> things. You know, I always liked the things I did, but uh, I was still curious for something new. And in that case, uh, after the PhD, then again, you know, I came with this step uh, when I was uh, after the master's, when I said, yeah, what's the next step? So I had the PhD, so I was safe because I had the next step. So after the PhD, I said, okay, postdoc, but I was a bit tired of that. I said, maybe at a later time. And then I said, okay, let's maybe by coincidence, you know, just like uh, go to another architectural office to see how it looks there now, you know. So by, uh, by chance, I ended up uh, working for a UN studio in Amsterdam. I was uh, for the first time in the Netherlands. Fantastic country as well. Uh, and yeah, it was a great office and we worked on, um, we were two designers designing the, um, uh, was an um, office building for Baku, Azerbaijan, in the White City. And um, it was actually was supposed to be built, but then later the clients, they wanted to change it to a retail uh, building. So, you know, it went over through many processes. A lot of people got involved later. And we worked, for example, um, as two designers with an Italian designer and myself on the National Stadium uh, for Tokyo. Okay. Which Zaha did one, but you know, at the end, uh, this story also got more complicated. And uh, some small projects, you know, but the problem was that also uh, a lot of the times in one week, you had to be working, let's say, on three or four designs. So you were working with people on, a, for example, Ferris wheel in Japan, then there was a African museum, there was like a whole team working on that. So in one week, you know, it was really um, challenging to be working one time, as I say, on a museum, and then two days after to be working on an observatory or a small station for Kutaisi Airport, which currently has been built. It's been designed in one or two days. But you know, those things were fun, but it also required a lot of energy. So, but at a certain point, this process also, um, to me, it kind of became a bit repetitive because, you know, you knew kind of the design language of the office and they do fantastic work. But I said for myself, you know, maybe I want to seek for something new again. And the next question was, again, we are now here with, yeah, with the chaos, total chaos, next, we're next. But what is really next for me? And uh, then I said, okay, let's start something, you know, on my own. So building your, up your own company, I said, what's the easiest thing? You know, I said, okay, to do something in architecture, I could do architectural design, but what I'm gonna do, you know, not to sound negative, but I was like thinking, yeah, you know, really realistically, I said, okay, if I do competitions, who's gonna pay the competitions? There's a chance that somebody who does have a portfolio, who has experience, but who hasn't built himself, you know, with his name, mm -hmm. uh, anything, you know, just for other companies, uh, who is gonna give him a project, you know, and maybe a small thing, but how are you gonna make your living? So I said, okay, I, you know, I was, um, I'm a bit, uh, let's say, my hobby is also these virtual images, uh, CG rendering, so I said, okay, maybe I can just offer that as a service for the beginning, let's see where that uh, goes. But that was the good thing, because, you know, I kind of had to invest, let's say, maybe three months, to, you know, uh, to uh, found the company, you know, to make all this bureaucratic stuff, to prepare a bit of images, to make the homepage, you know. So this requires some time. But actually that was, you know, three months, it's not a lot of time. So I did that, but then it was immediately, you know, I was looking for clients and then with also with some help of uh, some friends, that was also, you know, you always have to say friends are always very important and you really see the friends who support you are really your friends. Yeah. And, uh, you know, due to that and some of my older contacts where I used to work in Austria, I uh, start uh, getting projects, you know, and that was four years ago already when I started the company and still maintains all this to the, this uh, day to day. Uh, but then again, I said, you know, that's very cool. But again, I want to do something else, you know, sounds like <laughs> a story that's repeating. Um, so this is the this is the, the conscious part because mm. you, you did, you were consciously deciding to yeah. do different things uh, if, if it presented itself or if you wanted mm. to even search it out. Um, no, no. But at the end also, I started uh, doing a lot of workshops, I mean, due to um, different circumstances and for Rhino related and video related and also with Grasshopper, those, uh, those things mostly. And uh, then due to these uh, workshops, uh, then I got a call from um, a company in Austria, Swarovski, and they were interested mm -hmm. um, uh, to hire me as a consultant. So uh, I started also working with them and most of the time. Now maybe it's nearly four years ago. So since four years, we're developing different things internally and working on let's say parametric uh, projects. 
And uh, that was also started becoming my new passion because it was architecture in a small scale. So um, until this today, yeah, I do a lot of jewelry design. So I think currently maybe 60% of my time mm -hmm. would be really? jewelry design. Uh, but I didn't talk so much in the talk about because yeah, it's all a lot of things are confidential. Um, but also that so that became kind of my new passion. So I just want to say thank you oh, for talking yeah. to us. Uh, it's really interesting your story about all the things you did, mm -hmm. and I wish you the best of luck okay. in the future with the other coincidences and uh, things that are going to happen That's to you, it. obviously. Yeah, tomorrow, so. maybe I do medical software. Who knows? So, <laughs> <Yeah>. so thanks, <laughs> thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay, so, thank you. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you later.